Here's a Ku Klux Klan hood from the 1920s. And uh, those eye holes don't look quite right. And I guess the dude that wore that must have been like that sloth character from the Goonies. So I've been here in the American History Museum uh, of the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C. Uh, went to the Hall of Military History. Uh, also went and saw the Star Spangled Banner. But there is so much here that you can't possibly take it all in. Uh, so this video is just going to be a bunch of random cool things that I see here in the museum. Whenever I was a kid, The Muppets was one of my favorite shows. And here is the Swedish chef. Awesome. So these are Muhammad Ali's boxing gloves from around 1974. Very cool. And Apollo Ono's skates. Now I would argue that the greatest sitcom in television history was All in the Family. A very controversial show, but I always found it hilarious. Well, this is Edith and Archie Bunker's chairs. And also, over here and see if I can see it, and also Archie Bunker's hat. <laughs> that is awesome, I love that show. And it's a shame that they don't have it in syndication on TV anymore. This doesn't really fit in with the theme of any of the videos that I'm doing here, but it's just kind of crazy. These ad campaigns for cigarettes showing dentists and nurses and doctors talking about how great cigarettes are. Okay, let's see what this thing is here because I'm just curious. It's a ticket booth from Yankee Stadium around 1923. Yeah, nice. Hey, this is pretty cool, especially for baseball fans. The hat and uniform for Ted Williams from sometime in the 1950s. Served in World War II and the Korean War. Probably one of the most famous baseball players of all time. Check this out. Here is the lunch counter from Greensboro, North Carolina from the famous Greensboro set-in where four African-American students sat down at a whites-only counter and then refused to get up to challenge segregation. That is cool that they have that thing here. Now oh, this is kind of neat. This is a little bit of a history of all kinds of campaign paraphernalia for presidential elections. So they have buttons and ribbons, fly swatters, matchbooks, little figurines. That's kind of cool. Oh, there's one that would have been for Jimmy Carter. Kind of capitalizing on the peanut farmer thing. And then we get to the modern iconic campaign piece, the Make America Great Again hat. Here's a really old campaign piece from 1860. This is called a Lincoln Parade Axe. So I guess they'd make these things and kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess, use it to point back to Lincoln's rural roots. Fear not, old Abe is our, and I guess the rest is on the back. And there is the famous butterfly ballot that uh, 
was used in Florida that completely screwed up the 2000 election and magnifying glass they used to identify the hanging chads. Oh, Florida. You and your elections. Well, here's a 1949 board game from Milton Bradley called Lobby, a capital game where I guess you get to be a lobbyist. That sounds like the worst game ever. Here's a series of original posters uh, that was created by Norman Rockwell during World War II based on Roosevelt's Four Freedoms. Also encouraging people to buy war bonds. This is kind of neat. This is a set of Plains Indian moccasins that were presented to Ulysses S. Grant during the 1870s at a peace conference. Kind of cool. Hey, nice. They got a little shout out to history teachers. There's the book right there that I used for a long time. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting. This is an old ballot box from the mid to late 19th century. And as you can see, not exactly conducive to a secret ballot. Um, so even though people did have the right to vote with something like this, a voter could be intimidated quite easily. Well, this is the biggest clock I've ever seen. Uh, this was a clock that was designed to teach immigrants about the United States. So there's a little progression of presidents up there. There's stuff about Columbus. Yeah, pretty cool. And here are Dorothy's ruby red slippers from the Wizard of Oz. And they have an entire room dedicated just to these slippers. Wait, I take that back. They also have the wand of Glinda the Good Witch. So here is a chess set that was used by John Quincy Adams around 1825. But it's not nearly as impressive as the silk pajamas of Warren G. Harding. Look at that. This is interesting. This is a collection of locks of hair from every president from George Washington to Pierce. Huh. And a teddy bear named after Teddy Roosevelt. All right, so here is Clara Barton's ambulance. Of course, Clara Barton was the founder of the American Red Cross in 1881. So this is an ambulance that would have been used mm, late 1800s, early 1900s. And they have a guy that just stands by here watching this thing, making sure that nobody touches the glass. Because everybody seems to want to lean over this glass and I get at it, I don't know. Here's an old horse-drawn fire engine. It's pretty neat. Uh, this would have been from about the 1840s. And they would uh, put water in there and then hand pump it out to put out fires. Here's George Washington's easy chair that sat next to his bed. Huh. This is one of the most unique items in the museum. This is the hat that was worn by Abraham Lincoln on the night of his assassination. Wow. All right, well that was the Smithsonian Museum of American History. Uh, pretty cool. It, if I had any critique or anything negative to say about it, it would be that, man, some of the rooms were so stinking dark that you could hardly see, which made it difficult for filming. Uh, but here's what I like is at that place you are going to see one-of-a-kind items that you will not see anywhere else. Things like the Star Spangled Banner and Audie Murphy's uniform and Clark Gable's uniform and a number of other things. So for that reason I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it is definitely worth the stop if you're ever in Washington DC. Learned a lot as always. My recommendation is that you don't come to the National Mall hungry because $7 for a PB&J combo, my goodness.